Hi, and welcome to Tom Kennedy Science, and I'm your host, Dr. Tom Kennedy. Today, I'm continuing my lectures on climate change. We're going to focus on how do we know that humans are causing climate change. In my first two videos, I talked about how we know the Earth's climate has changed in the past and what we can learn from that. And then I also discussed how we know the Earth's climate is actually changing. But today, let's focus on how we know we did it. And let's not forget, there's a lot of evidence showing that we're changing the climate. I mean, enough to call it a fact, because we can measure a rise in surface temperatures. We can see a loss of Arctic sea ice, a loss of glaciers, a loss of Antarctic and Greenland ice. So the entire cryosphere of the Earth is getting smaller. We've also seen increase in extreme weather from hurricanes to drought intensification to stronger storms with more tornadoes, more rain being dumped. So these storms aren't as regular, but more sporadic and stronger. And of course, we're also seeing rising sea levels. So all of this evidence paints a picture that we are changing our climate and we're doing it rapidly. But the next question is, how do we know we did it? Because we're facing a lot of problems, a lot of resistance against climate change. Some people think that it's not happening. Well, I think the evidence for that is overwhelming. And I do trust the scientists that are generating the data. Then we have people that go, well, you know, it's happening, but it's happened in the past. It's natural, it's cyclic. There's no way that humans can cause climate change. Well, I disagree strongly. And I disagree based on evidence. So, hey, let's use some science, right? And what did we learn by studying the past? We do know that the climate has changed. We've gone from intense global ice ages to periods of hothouses where there's no ice on the planet. And one of the things that we know is that if you're really cold, we have less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And we know that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. This is an experiment that we can verify this. So we know that to be a fact. When we have more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, temperatures are warmer. So the question is, you know, what causes these fluctuations in carbon dioxide levels and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere over time? What's doing that? So there are these natural causes of climate change, like the movement of the continents and mountain building. You know, you can affect global circulation. You can affect your transport of heat from the tropics to the poles. If you have mountain building, well, you have rock weathering. If it's near the tropics, then you might have CO2 being scrubbed. Changes in the Earth's orbit will affect the incoming solar radiation. That can affect it. Solar output over long periods of time. Now, I mean, the, the solar output that fluctuates in our lifetime and even on the cycle of centuries is not enough to cause a large-scale global climate change long-lasting. We can see increases or decreases in volcanism because volcanism puts out carbon dioxide. So there are natural sources that release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, like volcanism, and there are natural processes that remove it, including rock scrubbing and also photosynthesis. And of course, meteor impacts cause global climate change as well, and it can do it quite suddenly. That's going to be an easy one to rule out. So part of the scientific method, part of the way we do science, we look to the past to understand the future, right? So we've, we've reconstructed the Earth's climate over the past. We figure out the ways that climate has changed. And we've figured out these ways that carbon dioxide levels fluctuate. So let's take these natural causes of climate change and see if they could be causing the current climate change or if we can rule them out. How about the movement of continents? Because we know that the movement of continents over the last 35 million years, or actually 65 million years, has caused the Earth to cool as we've got Antarctica you know, isolated down there on the South Pole, as all the continents have moved to the North and isolated the North Pole. That has actually worked to cool the Earth. Now, here's two pictures. Do they look the same? Yeah. You see, in the last 10,000 years, we've had the most stable climate of human history. Well, until the last hundred years when it's been really rapidly increasing. And if these two pictures look the same, that's because the continents move around at about the same rate as what your fingernails grow. 
So in the last 10,000 years, there's been no major shifts in the Earth's continents that would cause any type of climate change. Now let's go to the next one. Changes in solar output. I have heard people say, hey, uh, the sun's getting brighter. That's causing the Earth to warm. Hey, you know, that's actually correct, right? I mean, if the sun gets brighter and puts out more energy, we're going to warm up. And over the last billions of years, the sun is shining brighter. And into the future, it will continually shine hotter and brighter as it burns through its hydrogen. And, uh, you know, we only got about a billion and a half years left before the sun gets too hot for us. But we're talking about timescales of a century, decades, not billions of years. Now, the sun does fluctuate over time, not just in billions of years, but there are minor fluctuations on the scales of human lives and human civilizations. So we had the 11-year sunspot cycle of, you know, where it gets hotter, a little bit cooler, but not by much. And then recently we've discovered some larger, like, scales that last decades. And one of the things over the last couple decades probably lasting until the early 2030s, the sun has actually entered a cooler period of lower solar output. Now, that's interesting because this graph, I know we don't make emotional connections to graphs, but graphs represent data. And this data comes from reputable scientists publishing in peer-reviewed journals. This can be independently verified. But what that shows is solar output has gone down surface temperatures have gone up. We should be staying the same or actually getting slightly cooler. We are not seeing that. We are actually warming despite lower solar output. And uh, based on this, we should be actually getting a little cooler so we can rule this out. So now we've ruled out two natural causes, the movement of the continents and solar output. This one's easy, right? There's been no major meteor impacts. We've had a couple, small ones, tiny ones, but nothing that would change Earth's atmosphere. This one is very easy to get rid of. Um, we do know that large meteor impacts can rapidly uh, change global climates, as we saw in the end of the Cenozoic that killed off all the dinosaurs, um, but we just haven't seen any. We would know if there was a large meteor impact. It would be bad. So there, there's that one. It's out of the door. We can just prove it. Milankovitch cycles, named after Dr. Milankovitch, that discovered the changes in the Earth's orbit, the tilt of the Earth's on its axis. All of these things affect climate change. And we see the changes in periods of maximum glaciation to interglacials, which we're in today, are largely explained by Milankovitch cycles for the last 600,000 years, probably for the majority of the entire Pleistocene going back 2.8 million years. And you can see that the Earth's orbit it's not completely circular. It becomes more elliptical and more rounded over time. Thank you, Jupiter. It does affect our, our, our climate a little bit. But based on these Milankovitch cycles that uh, have cycles of 28,000, 48,000, almost 100,000 years, we should be staying about the same to actually cooling off in the next 10,000 years. We're not seeing that. We're getting warmer. So we're going against what these Milankovitch cycles would do. So think about it this way. You know, not only can we disprove Milankovitch cycles as causing our global warming or climate change to be more precise, we're actually overcoming several different factors at once. The Milankovitch cycles, which state we should be saying the same, a lower solar output and position of the continents should all indicate that we should be staying the same or cooling, yet our activities are so intense we're overcoming all three of those and continuing to warm. Now, earlier I said, you know, volcanism can really cause climate change because volcanoes put out carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases over time. Now, if they're blowing their tops, you know, they're going to lower surface temperatures by a degree or so for a couple of years because of all the particulates in the atmosphere that just reflect sunlight. But over time, in periods of increased volcanism will raise temperatures. And we saw that 251 million years ago at the end of Permian, which is like the greatest extinction in Earth's history. And of course, that was a one-two punch. The initial round of volcanism lowered Earth's temperatures because of all the particulate matter in the atmosphere reflecting sunlight. 
But because they continued for so long, they continually pumped carbon dioxide into the atmosphere at an accelerated rate and spiked the Earth's temperature and exacerbated the mass extinction. Now, we're still volcanically active, which is actually a good thing for us. But there's been no rate of increase in activity that would add to that extra CO2 levels. And this, is, of course, is Vulcan Arenal going off in Costa Rica back, I think, in the 90s. So we can disprove an increase in volcanic activity. Now, um, some of you may be saying, well, hold on now. A lot of the Earth's volcanoes are under the ocean. We might not see them. So how do you know that there's not a natural source of CO2 versus the burning of fossil fuels? And you know, that's actually a really good question. How do we know that the CO2 in the atmosphere is from burning fossil fuels versus volcanic activity or some other natural source? Because we're seeing it. We're seeing this rise in CO2 levels. I mean, this is what we're seeing. Well, it turns out that there are different chemical signatures of carbon dioxide coming from a volcano versus coming from fossil fuels. And that chemical signal is based on isotopes. There's a ratio of light to heavy carbon and oxygen, and carbon dioxide is a couple of oxygens. That there's a ratio of light to heavy isotopes. And that ratio is different in fossil fuels than it is in carbon dioxide coming out of volcanoes. And when we analyze those isotopic signatures in the atmosphere, that change is clearly coming from burning of fossil fuels and not and not a natural source like volcanism. So we can completely rule that out. And we can rule it out in two ways. One, we don't actually observe an increase in volcanism, even under the oceans. And second, we can rule it out using the isotopic signatures by looking at the ratios of light to heavy isotopes. So here's here it is. Here's our scientific method. This is science in action, right? You know, we see that the Earth is getting warmer. Hey, that's that's a fact. We can actually directly observe, measure, and test for that. We can disprove the natural causes of climate change, right? And in fact, not only can we disprove the natural causes of climate change, that's our alternative hypothesis. That means our alternative, our our other alternative hypothesis is that we're causing the warming. Not only are we causing the warming, we are overcoming natural cooling tendencies of the earth, like lower solar output, increased atmospheric scrubbing from mountain building like the Himalayas and the Rocky Mountains, and the position of the continents, which is affecting global circulation of heat transfer to the poles. And we're also overcoming the natural Milankovitch cycles. So what does that leave us? Okay, there's no other plausible explanations here. There's no other plausible explanation for climate change other than we did it. That's it. That's that's it. There's no other plausible explanation. And if you say, well, I don't buy the, the Earth's climate isn't changing, well, the data would not support that hypothesis. The data does support it. If you say, well, it's changing, but it's not caused by humans. There's no way we can have an impact. Once again, that position is not backed by the evidence. And in fact, the evidence is overwhelming that we did it. And we can disprove these natural causes of climate change. And that's important. So whenever somebody goes, yeah, you know, Earth is, Earth's climate has changed in the past. You go, hey, you're right. You make a connection with somebody. Yeah, you're right. So how could humans do it today? We're insignificant. We're not insignificant. That is a misnomer. We're the largest, most abundant mammal on the planet. Not just mammal, animal. And our activities are having a profound effect on our planet. Okay, well, I hope I convinced some of you that the Earth is warming and that we are doing it. So the next video, stay tuned, will be on... well. What are the consequences of climate change? Don't worry. I'm not going to tell you it's going to end civilization, but it is going to have an effect on us big time.